Hey there, it's Amy from thecrazycraftlady.com. It is no secret that I absolutely love a good dollar store cutting board craft, so much so that I'm gonna remake two crafts that I made this spring, both a hanging sign and a wooden flower box with a fresh update for 4th of July. this project you want to start with your cutting board and some wooden half balls. I just kind of dry fit them so I would know what background color to paint where. So I initially started with 5, 4, so 10, 18 and then I ended up only using 16 but I just use a pencil to mark kind of the boundary of where I wanted my wood bead star area to be and then that way I knew what part to paint white and what part to paint blue. So I just used my one inch flat paintbrush and some white paint and painted all of the stripes area white. And I also painted the edge of the cutting board as well just to give the finished project a more polished look. And then I went in with another one inch flat paintbrush and my blue paint and I painted the stars area and then let that all dry. And then I painted my little wooden half balls white, just tossed them in a Ziploc bag with a splash of water and some white paint, and then you give everything a real good shake up until everything is completely covered. And then to let them dry, you just pour them out onto a piece of parchment paper or wax paper just so they don't stick. Roll everything face up and then set them aside to dry. Now it's time to dry fit my stripes. You'll notice my stripes are cream and not red, but they will be red. But first we just have to measure, you know, which pieces we want where. This is just a lace ribbon from Dollar Tree, but any type of ribbon works. I just used this because I didn't have a plain red ribbon in my craft stash, and I didn't feel like going to the store to buy any, so I improvised. So dry fit all your stripes, get them cut to the length that you want, and then grab another piece of parchment paper, another one inch flat paintbrush, and some red paint and start painting your ribbon. So I use more of a pouncing motion, so if you have a pouncing brush that would work great on this project as well. But just get full coverage on one side of all of your ribbons and then set them aside to dry. And then when it was time to pick up my ribbons, there were a little like dry pieces of paint hanging off the edges, so I just came, kind of gave them a little brush off with my fingers, not a big deal. Then set them all in place onto the flag Then you'll also want to dry fit your little wood balls in place. I said before, I dry fit 18 and then I just felt like it looked too crowded. So I ended up removing two. So I had 16, four rows of four. So if it looked different in the finished project than here, that is why. Then it's time to just hot glue everything in place. Here I'm using my fine point hot glue gun, which is great for smaller projects and fine details like this. And I also have a silicone fingertip protector on my finger. Comes in really handy when you're gluing down the ribbons. But just hot glue each of those wood balls right in place there. And then for the ribbon, just the tiniest dab of hot glue, like three tiny dabs, left, middle, and right. And then on like the larger stripes, maybe four little dabs of hot glue and smooth those ribbons right down. And then it's time to hang your project. So I measured an inch, inch and a half from the from each edge of the cutting board along the top there. Mark your little hole spot. And then I use this little pin vise tool. I ordered it on Amazon. It's really great for small projects without having to bust out the power tools. You can drill your pilot holes there super easily. And then I just, keep a packet of these screw eyes in my craft stash. They're great for, you know, Christmas ornaments or any other hanging projects or hanging signs. And then twist that screw eye right into place. This bamboo is kind of a harder wood. So I ended up using my craft pliers to twist that hook eye into place. And then I grabbed some twine and some 1.5 centimeter wood balls. If your twine gives you a hard time like mine did, you can just grab a little bit of painter's tape wrap it around the end of the twine it'll keep it from fraying and then you can just cut that painter's tape off when you're done 
I strung up, I believe, 16 wood beads onto my twine, and then you simply cut off that painter's tape and then run one end of the twine and double knot it on that screw eye and then cut off the other end of the twine, run it through and tie it with the double knot on the other screw eye and you have a little hanging sign. This craft I just started with a little wooden mini crate from Dollar Tree. Fun fact, these have gotten smaller over time. I don't know, shrinkflation, whatever it is. This is a little bit smaller than previous, like by half an inch, quarter of an inch, maybe. Anyway, painted it white with white chalk paint. And then I also painted the whole uh, cutting board white as well. I didn't do like perfect coverage. I went more for maybe a distressed look. It just didn't have to be perfect. If a little bit of wood is showing through, that's fine. If you want to sand it too, that's a great option if you want to kind of rough up the edges. Let everything dry and then I just use my combination of wood glue and hot glue. The wood glue gives you that permanent long-term hold that you're looking for and hot glue for the instant hold so I can move on with the next steps of this craft. And then I just took a pencil and a ruler and I measured the midpoint of both the wood crate and the cutting board. This way I could make paint lines, or tape lines, excuse me, painter's tape lines for a grain sack pattern. So then I measured a half inch on either side of that center point, which then would give me a one inch stripe in the center. So I initially started with painter's tape. I used my nonstick scissors and I just cut one piece of painter's tape right in half. And you place that on either side of your little tick mark so you have a one inch strip ready to be painted in the middle there. Be careful to always have your little pencil marks outside of the tape, not underneath the tape so that they get painted over and you don't see them on the white paint. So I added tape lines to both the wood crate and the back of the cutting board there. And then I just kind of eyeballed the next little width and I used a full strip of paint. So you want, for the grain sack pattern, you want the thick strip in the middle and then two thinner strips, about, you know, half or a third of the width of the thicker strip on either side. So I just taped that off. And then make sure to smooth down the tape really, really well so you get crisp paint lines. And then I just grabbed my one inch flat paintbrush and my red paint and very lightly painted within that tape. I didn't go for perfect coverage. I kind of wanted it to be um, more dry brush and a little bit more rustic looking. But then once all your paint has been applied, do not wait for the paint to dry because you'll get crisper paint lines if you very carefully peel away the tape while the paint is wet. So just kind of peel it away at an angle and once you've peeled that tape away, make sure you keep the tape as far away from your project so that none of the extra paint from the tape gets anywhere near um, where it shouldn't be. But then once that paint had dried, I cut this little land that I love decal off my Cricut on navy blue. So I will, he here are the screenshots, okay? First of all, here is if you have a Cricut Design Space subscription, land that I love, take a screenshot, that's the code for it. And then I just made all of the elements on it, one color, and then here are the dimensions that I made it. So you have to unlock um, the dimensions because I spread it a little wider than it originally was. Then I just kind of set that in place to think, okay, this is where I want this to be. How high do I want my flowers to go? So you wanna fill that little box with flowers. I ran out of square or rectangular styrofoam, so I had to use little styrofoam balls. Use whatever you got. Just hot glue those in place so you have something for your flowers to stick into. For this, I used a faux eucalyptus pick that I just picked up at Walmart. Kind of cut some of the tops off those and start on the sides and then work your way to fill in. I use my heavy duty Fiskars craft scissors to cut through all that wire. For me, that's just the easiest way to do it. And just stick all those little mini eucalyptus or boxwood or whatever greenery that you like that matches your style. And then just fill that in. And 
And then this is so late in the summer that they were all out of summer flowers at Dollar Tree and they already had fall stuff out, but luckily red is a fall color. So I just grabbed one sprig of these red fall florals and I just kind of stuck the tops. I just popped the tops right off and I only used one stem here, uh, just the sprigs from one stem and stuck those in within my eucalyptus leaves. And then to kind of fill in so you don't see any of the styrofoam, I just cut four little squares of burlap and I hot glued them into each of the four corners of the little wood crate. I just folded the square into a triangle and then a triangle again, and then carefully hot glued it into each of the corners. This is just to fill in any empty space between any of the greenery or the flowers and so that none of the styrofoam shows through. And then to finish it off, I used that decal that I cut on my Cricut earlier grabbed some transfer tape and smoothed the decal onto the back of the cutting board. So this is why it's so important to kind of dry fit it at first to make sure you know how high you want your flowers and your greenery to stick up so that it doesn't either cover part of your decal or be too low that there's a weird blank space below your decal. And then if you watch very closely here, you'll notice that as I peel away the transfer tape, the A on the word that uh, didn't make it onto the cutting board, but luckily I noticed before I threw away the transfer tape and I was able to salvage it. So attention to detail, my friends. And then here are my finished hanging American flag sign and patriotic flower box. And then I guess I'll stack them up against my spring versions. I'd love to hear in the comments your thoughts and which one you maybe like better. I hope you enjoyed watching these crafts come together. Until next time, happy making.